वेलकम ऑल इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डील विथ अ न्यू एग्जाम्पल डेट इज एग्जाम्पल नंबर सिक्स इसके एज द रूट लोकस ऑफ के एज अ वेरिएबल पैरामीटर ऑफ यूनिटी फीडबैक कंट्रोल सिस्टम हुज ओपन लूप ट्रांसफर फंक्शन इज गिवन एज जी ऑफ एस इक्वल्स टू के इन टू एस प्लस वन ओवर एस स्क्वायर सो हियर इन दिस क्वेश्चन वी आर गिवन द ओपन लूप ट्रांसफर फंक्शन डेट इज जी ऑफ एस एंड वी नीड टू स्केच द रूट लोकस so we will do this by following all the steps nine steps that we discussed in the previous videos moving on to the step number 1 that is determination of number of poles and number of zeros so we will first calculate the number of poles since we know that number of pole can easily be calculated by equating the denominator part to 0 on equating this s square equals to 0 we will get two poles that both lies at s equals to 0 so our pole p1 lies at s equals to 0 and pole p2 also lies at s equals to 0 so the number of pole is equals to 2 here moving on to the next calculation that is number of zeros so on equating the numerator part to 0 we will get our number of zeros on equating s plus 1 equals to 0 we will get our 1 0 at s equals to minus 1 so 0 1 will lies at s equals to minus 1 so the number of zero is exactly equals to 1 moving on to the next step that is step number 2 calculation of number of branches of root locus and the number of branches of root locus can easily be determined by the formula maximum of number of poles comma number of zeros so here maximum of number of pole is equals to 2 here and number of zero is equals to 1 here so maximum of 2 and 1 is 2 only so we can say that the number of branch of root locus is equals to 2 moving on to the next step that is step number 3 in which we will calculate the number of asymptotes so the angle of number of asymptotes can easily be calculated by the formula number of poles minus number of zeros since we have two poles and one zero that's why number of asymptote is equals to one only moving on to next step that is calculation of centroid of asymptote step 4 centroid of asymptotes so the centroid of asymptotes can easily be calculated by the formula summation of real part of poles minus summation of 
real part of zero whole divided by number of pole minus number of zero since we have our two poles first lies at zero and second one also lies at zero and our one zero that lies at minus one so on calculating and putting the values in this formula we get summation of real part of pole that is zero plus zero that is zero only minus real part of zero that is minus one divided by number of pole is equals to two minus number of zero is equals to one so we will get the centroid as one only moving on to the next step that is step number five in which we will calculate the angle of asymptotes So the angle of asymptotes can easily be calculated by formula phi equals to 180 into 2m plus 1 divided by number of pole minus number of zero. So here for the calculation of angle of asymptotes firstly we have to calculate the value of m and since we know that m equals to 0 and ranges from 0 to number of pole minus number of 0 minus 1 so m value will start from 0 and lies within number of pole is equals to 2 minus number of 0 is equals to 1 and minus 1 that is 0 so we will calculate the angle of asymptote at m equals to 0 only so on putting m equals to 0 phi becomes 180 into 2 multiplied by 0 plus 1 divided by number of pole equals to 2 number of 0 is equals to 1 so we get 180 divided by 2 that is equals to 90 degree so the angle of asymptote is equal is equals to sorry this is 1 so the angle of asymptote is equals to 180 degree moving on to the next step that is step number 6 root locus lies on which part of real axis so since we know that we have two poles so first pole lies at p equals to s equals to zero pole p2 also lies at s equals to zero and we have one zero that is z1 lies at minus one on drawing the s plane this is the s plane this is the imaginary axis this is the real axis on plotting these poles and zeros this will be our pole at P1 at s equals to 0 and pole P2 at s equals to 0 and at minus 1 we have 1 0 so now find out how many regions are there this is plus infinite it is minus infinite so the reason 1 that is denoted by x1 will start from 0 and end at plus infinite reason 2 that is denoted by x2 will start from minus 1 and end at 0 reason 3 that is denoted by x3 will start from 
minus infinite and then that's minus 1 this is x1 this is x2 this is x3 so now talk about x1 so in the right hand side of x1 how many poles are or zeros are there since no poles or zeros are there in the right hand side of x1 that's why it is an invalid reason moving to the next reason that is x2 which lies between minus 1 to 0 that is this reason in the right hand side of x2 how many poles or zeros lies since two poles at 0 lies in the right hand side of x2 so two poles lies in the right hand side of x2 now talk about the reason x3 how many poles or zeros lies in the right hand side of x3 so here is the one zero and here is two poles that is total three lies in the right hand side of x3 since it is an even number that's why it is invalid area but three is an odd number since it is an odd number that's why it is a valid reason so we can easily say that our root locus lies between minus infinite to minus 1 this is a valid reason since we also know that so root locus lies from minus 1 to minus infinite okay moving on to the next step that is calculation of break in or breakaway point since from this figure we see that these are two poles and here in this question only one zero is there so another zero will lie on this real axis so this is the imaginary zero and since two conjugate zeros lies on the real axis that's why we can say that break in point will exist so here is the concept of the break in point if the two conjugate zero lie on the real axis of the s plane then the break in point will lie so we can say that break in point exist and break away point does not exist because no two poles lies on the s plane that are conjugate also so let's calculate the break in point for the calculation of break in point we have to first form the characteristic equation and the expression for the characteristic equation is 1 plus g of s into h of s is equals to 0 since it is a unity feedback control system that's why h of s here is equals to 1 only on putting the value 1 plus in the question we have given the value of g of s as k into s plus 1 over s square and h of s is 1 equals to 0 on taking the value of k at the LHS and all the remaining term in the RHS we get k equals to minus s square over s plus 1 since for the calculation of break in or breakaway point we have to form dk by ds equals to 0 so here is the value of k so we will differentiate it
dk by ds will be exactly equals to firstly taking the s plus 1 and differentiating minus s square that will be minus 2s and then minus sign is there and taking minus s square and differentiating s plus 1 that will 1 divided by s plus 1 to the power 2 equals to 0 so on cross multiplying we get minus 2s square minus 2s plus s square equals to 0 so we get s square equals to minus 2s so s equals to minus 2 this is the value of s or the break in point this is break in point let's move on to the last and the final step that is plotting of the root locus on the s-plane so this is our s-plane this is imaginary axis this is real axis since we have two poles at zero only this is one pole this is another pole at zero only and one zero at minus one this is minus one and it is one zero Since we calculated that the number of asymptote is equal to 1 and the centroid of asymptote is 1 also so here is the 1 which is a centroid centroid of asymptotes and the angle of asymptotes is 180 degree that will like this and we have another imaginary zero at minus infinite and our break in point lies at s equals to minus 2 this is break in point this is minus 2 since we have studied that the poles will depart from its position and emerge into the zero and since the breaking point exists at s equals to minus 2 so we can say that the pole this pole p1 at s equals to 0 will depart from s equals to 0 and emerge at s equals to minus 2 and following this path it will go to this is 0 making an angle of 180 degree that we have calculated this is the 180 degree angle after that this is an another pole and it is an imaginary zero so this pole also depart from this position and goes to s equals to minus 2 in this direction and from this s equals to minus 2 it will give, go to imaginary zero in this direction and emerge at imaginary zero so this is all about the plotting of root locus on the s-plane if you like my videos then please press the like button and subscribe to my youtube channel thank you